Yo, what is going on my friends? Welcome back, finally. It's been about a week and a half. The reason for me not uploading for that week and a half is I actually moved all the way across the country from Pittsburgh, PA, all the way over to Los Angeles, California. Super excited about that. A lot more is gonna be going on. I'm planning on upgrading all the content you guys are seeing as well as giving you guys some new series, some more in real life things that's gonna help you guys. Tomorrow I'm gonna upload a vlog showing you guys my setup. I'm still moving a lot of boxes out of here, unpacking things, building furniture. Anyways, today what we're gonna be doing is I wanted to start it off with the bang we're gonna be creating a tutorial for three awesome effects within this BTS idol music video now these guys are huge and you can just tell from the production value of this music video there's a bunch of crazy things going on lots of bright colors lots of really good green screen shots kind of put together and I got this idea from watching just no D shows breakdown video go check that out link down in the description he does a really good job at giving an overview of an editor's mindset while watching the video and it's just a really interesting thing to watch but in this video I want to really go in and give you step by step step instructions on how you could go about recreating similar effects. So in particular, I'm going to be showing you how to do this cool Snapchat filter effect onto people's faces. Also, I'm going to show you how to do this crazy infinite zoom through the person's mouth. This one is really awesome. You can do with an After Effects. I'm also just going to throw in a bunch of random information and tips like these paint overlays in the back, as well as talk about some 3D stuff for this set. Another super exciting thing is after this scene, you'll see this shot right here really interested me. And what they did was they photo scanned every everyone's face in the group and just based off the budget of this you can tell that they probably went to a nice studio had this all professionally done I'm gonna show you guys a way you can do this using just an app that you can get for I think 99 cents you can face scan your own face or just any objects you would like and then I'll show you how to bring them over into 3d software or even just after effects using element 3d and then I'll show you how to do simple little animations to create something similar to this so anyways let's hop right into premiere and then we're gonna hop into after effects there's so much jam-packed in this tutorial there's something to learn learn for beginners, intermediate, and advanced users. So if you don't follow along with some specific part, don't worry, just skip through. There's tons more information. You guys can definitely pick something up from this. So we're gonna work backwards. We're gonna start with probably the thing that you guys have the least experience with, and that is the photo scanning. And I wanna talk about this because it's super awesome. So all you need to do for this is download this app called TRNIO. Link down to that will be in the description. Here is some video footage showing you guys exactly what to do. Go ahead and open up the app, follow the on-screen instructions. There's there's also a cool little community page where you can see what people scan. But what you need to do is just click the little camera, follow the on-screen instru instructions. It's super easy. Just rotate around the subject's face being as still as you can. Automate and take about 30 pictures. Super simple. Once you are done with that, just go ahead and upload that and publish that. It takes about like 15 to 20 minutes, but it's definitely worth it. Once you have uploaded that, you can email yourself a link and it's going to give you guys a 3D file along with a texture file of your face or whatever object you choose choose to 3d scan so this is pretty cool um, you don't have to just put it in music videos or videos or whatever you can't or whatever you want to do with it there's so many applications you can do with 3d scans especially of your face or of any object that you like you can even 3d print these which is pretty awesome so once you have done that and you have emailed the file to yourself you're gonna get a PLY file which is a polygon file we're gonna convert that so we can bring that into any of our software that we like so to do that you're gonna need this program called mesh lab link down below free download super Super simple we're just gonna use this to do a quick little conversion and then don't click open project you want to click import mesh so click import mesh and then we're gonna go ahead and just find wherever we save that file that you got from your email and just open up the 3d PLY file that is in that folder so go ahead and click open and here it is, as you guys can see, it's a little bit rough on some edges, but using some tools within the 3D software, you can always patch that up. Another cool feature within the app is you can crop out anything you didn't want. I actually was just doing it quickly, so I forgot to crop out these parts, but that's definitely an option. I actually did a really good job, and we're gonna go ahead and just save this and convert it. So go up to File, we're gonna go to Export Mesh As, go ahead and click this drop down menu and select OBJ. So do that, name it whatever you like, click save. Make sure you select your texture name. It should be already in there with the folder. This is all good. Go ahead and click OK. All right, now that you've done that, I'm gonna hop into Cinema 4D and you guys can throw this into any 3D software you use, such as Blender, such as 3DS Max. Since it's an OBJ, it's pretty universal. You can bring it into a lot of things and I'm gonna show you how to bring it into Element 3D after this as well. So I'm gonna go to file, merge objects, and I'm just gonna find that folder that I was talking about earlier. Okay, so now that you found the folder, you're gonna to wanna to open up the OBJ file that is in there. Click open, 
and then click OK. If you guys want, you can size it up or just zoom in. If you want, just bump the coordinates up. I'm just going to zoom in for now to make it a little bit easier. Now let's go ahead and apply the texture onto this mesh. So pretty simple. Let's just double click this material down here and then under color, let's go ahead and just load in a texture. And let's go back to that same folder I was talking about and then just open up the texture that comes along with it, which is super useful. I'm super happy that the app actually includes the texture. It looks a little bit low quality, but that's just because it's not rendered. I'm gonna just open up this Octane Live Viewer window so you guys can see what it looks like rendered. And this is just an example. You don't have to follow these specific steps. Any 3D software you guys have, just bring it in there. This is just more of a guide to show you how you can create those 3D scans and then eventually bring them in. And it's looking really good as you guys can see pretty accurate and the benefit of doing it with the 3d software is you guys can change around the lighting go ahead and just add in a little area light here so there's a lot of customization available for this as you guys can see you can change around the lighting now here's another super cool thing that I want to talk about within this music video they have a part not only do they have this part where the heads are kind of rotating around like this the craziness here I'll show you how to create those animations but in the future I want to create a video to take those 3d scans and put them onto a DAS model as you see right here and then animate that DAS model I think that's gonna be super cool definitely gonna make that video on the future so subscribe like I said if you're interested in seeing something like that go back let me show you how to bring it into After Effects an element 3d and then I'll show you how to just add some animations okay so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new composition and then let's go ahead and load in element so I'm gonna go to new solid and then click OK and then let's just drop the element 3d plugin onto there and like I said if you guys have nothing to do with 3d don't worry go ahead and skip through the video and find the places where I talk about the snapchat filters as well as cool zoom effect I really just want to cover this first because this is something that I think not a lot of people have been exposed to and I wanted to introduce that to you in case it interested you in the future so let's go ahead and click import and it's pretty much the same thing just go and find that folder with the obj that you converted Go ahead and click open and then element goes ahead and loads the texture on let's go ahead and just click normalize size and there we go click ok and bam we can even go ahead and right click here let's go to new and then camera and then you can use the c key on your keyboard to actually rotate around in 3d space and just zoom around create some really cool stuff so just for example say we put a bunch of these 3d scans together let's open up my camera options like this keyframe all of those by just dragging down on those stopwatches drag to the very end and then let's just make a little simple um, rotate animation and bam there you go simple keyframe animation using element 3d you can do it in any of your 3d so you can do it in any of your 3d softwares it's just a super cool thing that i wanted to show you guys so anyways on to some of the other things let's go ahead and talk about the snapchat filters and then the infinity zoom so for these snapchat filters it's actually very easy you're essentially just doing the same thing that snapchat does you're getting a face track of the subject's face and then we're going to go ahead and just paste some little objects onto that face and we can even do some other cool things like brighten up the face like that and have it fade in and out for that let's just start with some normal footage right click it place with After Effects composition okay into After Effects now and here we are just some normal footage let's go ahead and do the face track so that we can start setting this up and then pasting objects onto his face so pretty easy with this let's go ahead and just click on our layer and then go up to our, our masking tools hold down alt and just click on the square until you get the ellipse tool you can also just click Q on your keyboard select the ellipse tool and then just draw a circle around the subject's face now after effects has this really awesome feature that works very very well compared to its other tracking methods which is awesome make sure this layer and the mask is selected also go to window and just make sure your tracker is selected and then we're going to go down here and just find our tracker so here's our tracker just go ahead and open that up our mask and our layer selected you now have this option to do face tracking detail features or outline only and this is only if you have that mask on there so keep that in mind so with the face tracking detailed features you don't even have to create a null yet just go ahead and click play and you guys are going to see the magic happen really really good job at doing this face track simple as that now we don't want this to just mask the face away so let's go down to our mask click m on your keyboard if you don't see that and then let's just change the mask from add to none. So now we have the mask tracking information looking really good. Now let's go ahead and paste anything we want on here. So let's maybe paste on some glasses. So let's go onto the internet and I just searched for glasses PNG. Went ahead and use this one here. So just make sure it's a PNG transparent background. Right click that, save that, and then let's drag that into After Effects. So we'll drag that into our composition and I'm just going to do a rough little resizing here 
I'm gonna open up these transform options and also just rotate a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just kind of give it a rough um, little fix just like that. Now, the only issue is if we move along here, it's just staying in place. So let's connect it with that tracking information that we just went ahead and made. Take that tracking information, put it onto a null, which is basically just a placeholder for tracking information, and then parent the object to our null. Now that may sound complicated, but follow along, it's really easy. Just right click down here. Now we're gonna go to new, and then we're gonna click null object. So null four, let's right click and rename that to Tracking info face, pretty easy. Now we're going to go ahead and open up our null object, open up transform for that, and you're gonna see position. So let's hold down alt on our keyboard and let's click that position stopwatch at our beginning position. Now what that is gonna do is just gonna open up these little options here. And what we can do is we can actually pick whip this to our facial expression. So let's open up our original tracking and let's go ahead and let's close the mask for now. Let's go open up effects, face track points. You guys are gonna see all these keyframes from the tracking information and it's pretty crazy as you guys can see here if I drag along. So let's go ahead and connect this to just the left eye pupil for the glasses. So open up left eye and you see all the in-depth tracking that it did here. Tracking info face. As I said before, we have our pick whip all the way down here to where it says left eye pupil. Bam, just like that. It's gonna paste in an expression there. Now let's just connect the actual layer to that null. So let's bring this back. And it's pretty easy. All you need to do is just click toggle switches and mode so you guys see parent and link and go ahead and just select our glasses layer, parent and link, tracking info face bam just like that now drag along and there you go it's following the face simple as that you guys can do this with really anything just using some nulls just using that built-in face tracking which is actually very effective um, 90 percent of the times i tried that it actually works really well if you want to add some face touch features such as how it kind of gets brighter here it's really easy to do that now since we already have a mask over our face let's go to our original footage and i'll actually rename that original so you guys don't get confused. Let's click on our original footage, click M to show that mask, as you can see, selecting the face, and it's kind of tracked too, which is really useful. What we're gonna do is just select that and click Control D to duplicate it. Now let's click M on our duplication and let's change the mask from none to add. Now what we can do is we can just add any effects onto that duplication. So I'll rename that to face touch, and for example, let's go ahead and just add in some curves. So let's go to our effects and let's look up curves, drop that onto there. And let's just bump up the curves and you see the face just gets brighter. Now we can also open up our mask options, bump up the feather a little bit just to blend it. As you guys see, you can do some cool little face touch options and it's already gonna be pre-tracked onto there. There's a lot of things you can do with this with this really cool face tracking method. Pretty much the same as Snapchat and you guys can really face track anything you want in the world onto here to make your own cool little filters. Okay, so that is how you do that guys. Now let's go through and do the last step which is probably one of my favorite and that is doing this cool zoom through somebody's mouth. Now let's go in and just slowly break down this effect so that you guys get a better idea of what we're trying to create. So he closes his mouth right when he opens it back up they use a mask as you can see here and then they use a little after effects camera something similar maybe even just a zoom effect to really go through here and what i liked about this is these mouth layers are really kind of sitting in 3d space so i'm going to show you how to position them within 3d space so it's really like you're going through a tunnel and it's pretty simple as you can see here's the mask of the mouth as you go through Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Smooth transition into this next clip of them in a green screen studio. Also, quick little side note, if you guys want any cool little paint clips like this, awesome website for that, footagecrate.com. Just go ahead and look up paint. There's a mixture of free ones as well as ones that you can get with a monthly subscription. I kind of just threw some of, the, some of them in there for my example. Let's go back and check it out. Bam, bam. And I literally just threw in placeholders some like green screen clips of sharks dancing. And um, like I said, some paint stuff going on in the back. And I even put in a little Element 3D, um, free 3D model here, which I'll show you in a bit as well. So some cool little things there. Like I said, footagecrate.com, link down in the description. This isn't pay promotion. Um, I just like to use their website a lot and I have in the past. Okay guys, now that we are in After Effects, let's go and find the place where we want this effect to happen. Let's try and find a place where his mouth opens up, maybe right there. 
kind of like that. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and click Control Shift D just to split that. And to make this easier, so we don't have to worry about moving footage and tracking and things like that, we're just gonna right click the part where this, where his mouth is open, and we're gonna go over to Time, and we're gonna go to Freeze Frame. So here's what that looks like. Plays. Bam, and we're gonna add the zoom effect and all the craziness happening there on that freeze frame. Go to where our freeze frame starts, just zoom in a bit, and we're gonna go ahead and just instantly mask this. So let's go ahead and select the pen tool or click G on your keyboard, a rough little mask around his teeth, trying to just cut out the part where we can zoom in. All right, just like that. And let's click M on our keyboard on that layer, change that from add to subtract, just like that. And since that's a little bit rough, let's open up our mask options. So double click that and bump up the pixels on that feather. And that's looking okay, so that's gonna work for now. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start setting up this craziness. So, to do that, let's keep this all organized because we're gonna be working with a lot of layers. So this is just gonna be um, original, original freeze, like that. Okay, now what we wanna do, we're gonna wanna click Control D on original freeze to duplicate that and drag that underneath our original. Now the next step is you're gonna wanna make these 3D layers. So original freeze one and two, click this switch right here. Now if you aren't seeing that, just click toggle switches and modes, click this 3D box, and this is gonna be really important because what we really wanna do is move these layers back in 3D space so that we can really go through like it's a tunnel. Now that may seem complicated, but I'm just gonna give you guys my best visual representation of what I'm talking about. Let's open up our duplication one. I'll just name it dupe one. Let's open up our transform options for that. And then right here where it says position, since this is a 3D layer, you're gonna see all these 3D position options. So this is your Z axis position. Let's take our Z axis and move it backwards. And you guys are gonna see it moves kind of back where you can see the mouth there. And we can also reposition this and move it around so we can see how that looks. There we go, we have the first little duplication. Now what we're gonna do to make this easier is we're gonna create a camera. And this is just gonna give us a nice guideline of what the 3D space is looking like. So right click here, new camera, click okay. And then let's open up our options for our camera. So transform, let's just jack all these keyframes on and then let's move a little bit, maybe like that. Click C on your keyboard to open up your camera controls. Move over to this zoom tool and then move forward and also just kind of position it like we're flying through the mouth. You don't want to go too far. Now here's where we kind of have to change things up. So here's what that looks like, bam. Now this Z position on this first duplication is a little bit too far back because we have to drag a little bit too far. So we can grab, we can grab dupe one, let's go to our Z position on there and let's just kind of tweak that. Keep it around 150 because if you really start pushing it all the way, all the way back in 3D space, you're gonna kind of go too far. So like that, nice. And this kind of takes a lot of tweaking with the positioning, just kind of reposition things, get it how you like to, and just check that out. It looks really cool. If you think of the layers like this, you're moving through them like that. So mess around with your Z positioning for all these, tweak those around. Maybe let's add one more, Control D, and let's open up duplication three, jack back the um, Z position, move it down. So that is how you guys can do it, just using Z positions and duplications. Now let's go back to our camera and let's make that go all the way through. So at that keyframe, let's go back and let's just start really moving through this nightmare of a tunnel. You guys can really create some cool stuff with this where the camera doesn't wanna zoom anymore. If it does that, what you can do is just select these duplications and when it gets to that part where it's slowing down, Let's just select here, just make a little keyframe. So maybe move back two frames, keyframe all those, move up like one, and then grab the Z positions of Z position of that and just kind of make it zoom away like that. And that is how you guys can create that camera going through the mouth. Like I said, just takes a decent amount of tweaking. And what he, what I did here was I just used Element 3D to throw in some little set things. I threw in those paint overlays, simple stuff like that. That is the basics of it, guys. I hope that helped. I think that with the information from this video, you guys can create a lot of awesome stuff. Make sure you guys tweet it to me or send it to me on Instagram, whatever you create, at Max Novak YouTube on Twitter, underscore Max Novak underscore on Instagram. So if you make some something cool share with me I, I always love to check out what you guys create from the tutorials if you guys did enjoy consider subscribing joining the community leave a like leave a like if you did it helps the growth of the channel anyways guys thank you so much for watching bunch of new stuff